Good morning. Uh, do we have any visitors this morning? Our grandkids are here. Our mother oh. I got the girls here. And the Over here. <laughs> Is there any other visitors? Have any joys? Okay, we'll go to announcements. Okay, on the Ebenezer Prayer family, we'll pray for Brad and Monica Holting this week. Now showing his American Underdog open at the B&B Theaters in the Flint Hill Cinema. The 2022 church calendars available for $12 if you signed up and you just see Tyson about them. And there are some extras if you didn't sign up but would like one. Okay. Uh, just get with me. Okay. I think I've got, with the exception maybe of Andy one to Doug, I think I've got an out to everyone who signed up for one. But if you would like one, uh, I've got extras here. Okay. Monday, tomorrow night is a prayer meeting here before Bible study and then the Bible studies with Merle and Joan over at the Fellowship Hall. And they're in the fourth chapter of Hosea. Tuesday, January 11th is All God's Children resumes. Wednesday, January 12th is a youth group at 7. Saturday, January 15th is, is a fellowship breakfast next Saturday. Saturday, January 25th from 5 to 6.30 is a Hopi United Methodist Church soup supper in there. Tuesday, January 18th at 6.30 is a ladies fellowship. Saturday, January 22nd is the Iron Men Summit in Emporia. January 27th through the 29th is a men's encounter at the cross. And March 11th through the 13th is a women's encounter at the cross. One thing I might add to you, Terry, that I didn't get in there, uh, the food boxes that are distributed up there at Abundant Harvest on uh, Whittier Street, yeah. uh, they will be there this Tuesday somewhere. They, they may stay up a little bit early. They always say 1 o'clock, but if they get everything set up, sometimes they start a little bit early to get people running through there. But okay. Line up so towards the, from the south, coming in from the south. Uh, they're there at 1 o'clock this Tuesday. This Tuesday? Yep. Okay. we have any birthdays this morning? Terry, can I make an announcement yep. too real quick? We have a new sign-up sheet to clean up the church or janitors for Jesus back there. So if you would like to sign up for a specific month for either the church or the fellowship hall, we have a new one back there. Okay. Any birthdays? <laughs> Anniversaries? Anniversaries? My mom and dad had their 43rd anniversary on January 6th. Oh, good. 43rd? Oh, I just have an announcement. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to announce for my dad that we will be having the third Sunday choir practice today. So right after church, it will be brief, and he said to make it brief. So just okay. to Today, right after today. church. Yes. Okay. Do. Just as I am is the song. Okay. Is there any other anniversaries? We'll have the children's message. Wow. You can sit with me. Come right here. <laughs> He's looking for this spot. <laughs> all right. Good morning, everybody. How you all doing? All right. Oh, man. A lot of folks out here today. Yeah. Well, so this morning, we're going to talk a little bit. As always, we're going to talk about Jesus. Okay? And so we're going to talk about why Jesus is our hope and life. So this morning, you will hear Terry reading. Now, who can understand what is being read up there every Sunday? Anybody can understand it? All right. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do something. So next, next week, Sunday, you're going to tell me 
exactly what was read. And one of the things I'm going to talk about this morning, you try to remember and let me know where in the Bible it was. Okay? All right? Is that fair? Okay. Next week. Good. So listen to what Terry is reading and what I'm going to talk about. So this morning you will hear Terry reading from the book of Luke. And in that book, at the end of what he's reading, Jesus is being baptized. And when Jesus uh, uh, was baptized, when he came out of the water, the heavens opened and there was a voice that said something. Anybody can think what that voice said? Or who are the voice from? God. Okay, it was from God. And you know what the voice said? Okay, so, oh, somebody said something? <laughs> All right. The voice said, this is my son, and I love him. Okay? And so this morning, you will hear me preaching about something. And I will be talking about Jesus Christ, who is our hope and light. And what that means is that Jesus being our hope and light means that because of God's love for us, so Jesus is our hope and light. Hope is something in the Bible. So out of the Bible, hope is something that you, you, you wish for. But in the Bible, hope is something that is certain. You know you're going to have it. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and, so, and so Jesus is our hope and light because of God's love. So from now until the end of this month, every time we pray, I want us to do one thing. So when we pray, what do we do? How do we do? What do how, tell me, how do we do? For our hands and bow our heads. Okay. So this time, from now until the end of this month, even when you're home or when you're at all God's children or you eating your breakfast, dinner, or lunch, or you're at school and you pray, instead of folding your hands, what I want you to do is to make your hands like love. So you see, do your hand like that. Okay? Everybody? Is that how you do it? This? Okay, good. That's how we do our hands. So instead of folding our hands like this now, we do our hands like this for love. And what that means is that the love that God has for you and I, so that because of Jesus Christ. Okay? So let us pray. Ah, everybody do their hands like love now. Let us pray. Okay, good. And then we put it over our heart instead of on our face. Order our heart and bow our heads. Okay? All right, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the love of Jesus Christ that he has for us, for being our hope and our light. We pray now that you bless each and every one of us as we give your love and share Jesus' love with those we come in contact with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Everybody go get a treat. <laughs> Yes, amen. <laughs> Come on, bud. Go get this. Go get this. What? What? Our gathering him this morning is Jesus' name above all names. If you please stand, and then we're going to sing it twice.
Would you please join me in the call to worship? All creations proclaim the greatness and love of God. The light of God shines on us with new hope. Open our hearts, O Lord, to see your light and live in your hope. Prepare us for your service, people, to this world. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God of hope and life, amid darkness, you offered light to people who lived in fear. Today that light comes to us as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Open our hearts this day to remind us that you have marked us as your people. Prepare us to serve you by serving your world. Endure us with hope. Keep your constant in prayer. Empower us for the servants of love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is a spirit song. You may be seated. The epistle today comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they that were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their, lay their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And the gospel today, if you would please stand for the reading of the gospel. Comes from Luke chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. And as the people were in expectation, and all the men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the last days of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Now when all the people were baptized, it would come to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was open, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came down from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please repeat after me. To teach and preach God's word, making disciples of Jesus Christ, by growing a healthy church, to include prayers, worship, proclamation, evangelism, and compassion. That is our vision statement. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name and we thank you and praise you for all that you continue to do for us. Now, dear God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So this morning, or uh, actually today, I shouldn't be here. I should be doing my military duties, but instead, as God would have it, um, well, I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> due to the COVID, spike in COVID, uh, my, the uh, unit decided that, my command decided that we should uh, do virtual battery assembly. So I should be in uh, military service right now. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm doing my, my service online, so we're doing it online, and uh, we're meeting online doing classes and stuff for this weekend. So it gives me the opportunity to come and worship this morning. So just think of me not being here, think of me being a, a, a guest preacher this morning. <laughs> um, I want to uh, thank God for each and everyone here, and, and this morning, it is very, um, it's very unique for the uh, sermon this morning, but the scripture read this morning talks about Jesus' baptism. And one of the, the things that is unique in this particular scripture talks about how uh, the heavens opened and, and uh, God spoke uh, from heaven and saying that Jesus is his beloved son. But what I want you to, to uh, focus on this morning here is that, first of all, this is Epiphany Sunday. And Epiphany Sunday is one of the church's calendar. It's the beginning of the church calendar, the church year. And so Epiphany is celebrated uh, in some denominations or some faith group it is celebrated the first Sunday of the year. That's uh, some uh, celebrate Epiphany Sunday as the first Sunday of the year. But Epiphany actually started on January 6th, so uh, on the wedding anniversary of Brenda and, 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 and Arlen. So that was Epiphany Day. It started on January 6th. Brenda didn't hear that. She was busy with her purse over there. Did you hear what I said? Ah, <laughs> got you. <laughs> well, uh, so I was talking about Epiphany, uh, Epiphany Sunday. It's first Sunday after, after uh, at the beginning of the year, January uh, 2nd. Some celebrate Epiphany Sunday as January 2nd. But Epiphany started on January 6th, which was your wedding anniversary. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, and so in the in the United Methodist Church, uh, our denomination we celebrate Epiphany Sunday after Epiphany, the start of Epiphany. So Epiphany was January sixth, January 9th, We celebrate Epiphany Sunday, and it is so unique why we celebrate it on the ninth, because the scripture lesson for this morning talks about Jesus Christ being baptized. 
And you know, as, as people of faith, baptism is very important for us. And so, uh, uh, on this Sunday where we celebrate Jesus Christ's baptism, it is also unique that we celebrate Epiphany Sunday, which Epiphany here means uh, the light shines. It means light, Epiphany. When you hear someone say, oh, I got an Epiphany, what that means is that, oh, something just popped up in my, in, in my head. I got a new understanding of, of, of this thing. So epiphany means light. And so when you get a, uh, you know, you always hear this saying, the light bulb just went off in my head. When, you, when, you, when you're thinking about something or when you, lo when you lose something, you're looking for it, or you're thinking of some, uh, some major uh, uh, item or stuff you want to say. And so epiphany means light. And so in Luke chapter uh, 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 3, verses 21, uh, verses 21 through 22, it says here, Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So the Holy Spirit, the heaven being opened, the Holy Spirit coming down, it signifies the light of the world. Jesus Christ being the light of the world and his baptism. So it is unique that we celebrate this first Sunday after the beginning of Epiphany as Epiphany Sunday. Now, having said all that, what that means for our, our uh, 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 sermon this morning. Our sermon this morning talks about Jesus Christ, our hope and light. Jesus Christ, our hope and light. And being our hope means that we are certain that Jesus Christ will be there for us. And he being our light will shine that light on us so that we too can share his word to the, to, 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 to the rest of the world. And so as Christians, wherever you go, whatever you do, Whoever you come in contact with, you give that light of Christ to them. You give that light of love. And so therefore, this morning, our scripture lesson, which is taken from Luke and Acts, Acts talks about the, the descending of the Holy Spirit. Remember Jesus Christ, after he, he, he rose from the dead and he was with his disciples, he, he told him, he said, I will leave you, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send someone to be with you. And so that promise was, 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 was uh, uh, received on, in Acts when the Holy Spirit came down upon his disciples. So the question now, what does it mean for Jesus Christ to be our hope and light? What does it mean for Jesus Christ to be our hope and light? Well, Christ is our hope and light because of God's love for us. God's love for us. God sent his only begotten son to the sinful world to eradicate us of all of our sins. Luke reminds us on the day of Christ's baptism that the heavens opened and the spirit descended on Jesus Christ. You see, uh, Luke states here in chapter 3, verse 22, he says, And the Holy Ghost descended in the bodily ship like a dove upon him. A voice came from heaven and said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. As I was studying this particular scripture, and I want you to go, go and do your own homework also, that if you look in the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where it talks about Jesus' baptism, there is a slight difference from what Luke says here and what Matthew and Mark talks about pertaining to this. You see, in Luke, Jesus, God, is speaking directly to Jesus Christ. That's number one. Number two, it says the, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily ship like a dove upon him. 
But if you look in the other gospel, and that's your homework for you to do, and I would, I would, I would, I would tell you, I would give you the answer, and you go and verify the answer. I would not, I would not leave you hanging, but I would give you the answer. When you go in those gospels and you read it, you will see that it talks about the heavens open and the Holy Spirit coming down. And also, there was a voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son. And you find out what the rest is. And then you come back whenever you see me, you tell me what it said. So I just gave you part of the answer so you know where to go. So go and look for that particular scripture and tell me exactly, I mean, uh, tell me what, what is the difference. But so the, 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 the answer to, to that is this, and that is in Luke, God is speaking to Jesus. In the other gospel, God is speaking to the people. And that's the slight difference in there. So you go and verify that and let me know. But the bottom line here is that because Jesus Christ is our hope and light, God's love for us was so great that he sent him to die for our sins. You see, the same love Jesus Christ passed on to us reassuring us of a genuine love for all his followers, even those who are not his followers. And this is the key. Jesus Christ showed genuine love for all of us who are his followers, his believers. But he also showed that love for those who are not his followers, those who profess that Jesus Christ is not Lord and God. He still showed love for them. That's how much God loved us. And his love for his son also goes beyond us and is shared with us. And so therefore, our hope lies in Jesus Christ, which means that we have a strong confidence and expectation of Christ's love. You see, Paul reminds us about hope in Romans 15 and 13, when he states that, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And yet we have joy and peace, knowing that whatever trials and tribulations we encounter, or whatever we are going through, Christ will be with us. Regardless of our problems, Christ will be with us. As our hope and light, we can overcome any adversity because Christ is our light. Remember what I said earlier, that because Jesus Christ is our light, so wherever we go, whoever we come in contact with, we can shine that light in a, in, in, in a, in a particular place. You see, it says there in John 1 and 5, the light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I, 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 I'm, very, I'm very sure and, and, and certain that wherever you go, as followers of Jesus Christ, you will shine that light. You know, uh, a few, a few uh, weeks ago, we had a movie in here, uh, The Chosen. And before we... Uh, before Tyson could bring the movie in here, he and I started to, 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 to talk, and we were brainstorming. And he said, Pastor, I really want to bring this movie here, but I don't know how to get rid of these lights. So I said, well, Tyson, you know, we can just wait and show the movie later on uh, uh, in, in the evening, because, you know, it, it gets dark by 5 o'clock anyway. And he was like, Pastor, I got to show this movie at, you know, uh, around 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock, and it will still be light. I was like, man. He said, I'm thinking about closing this place. So I said, well, you know, we can close that place over there and everywhere else. He said, there will still be light. And so what did he do? He got this big old thing. I don't know where he got it from. And sure enough, he gave it to his, his dearest, lovely aunt who labored over it, made that big old thing that put over there. And so we did all the windows and everywhere else. And he said, no, it's still not good. We got to do the top part. I need, I need cardboard. 
I was like, he said, I got to go look for this cowboy. I said, look here, man, Ty. I said, I just moved. I got a whole bunch of cowboys at my house. I gave you some. And so we did it. And sure enough, we were able to block out all the lights in this place. And so when you turn the, the light off, the place will be dark, but there will be a little bit of light coming in. And so if you are home and you think that light does not overcome darkness, turn all the lights off in your house, in your home, and just put on a little flashlight and you will see the difference. You see, as the light of Jesus Christ, we can overcome darkness easily. And so, because of God's hope and light, God's love for us has come into the world. Secondly, because of Jesus Christ being our hope and light, we are sojourners on this earth. The word sojourn here means to stay temporarily or be somewhere for a short time. As followers of Christ, we are sojourners on this earth. We are here only for a short period of time. And if you don't believe me, live a little bit and you will see. You see, the Bible reminds us in 1 Peter 1 and 13 through 15 that our body is, a, is temporary. And so we have hope and light through Jesus Christ that we will go to our final resting place in Jesus Christ. As sojourners, we come through this place temporarily. We come here just for a little while. Yes, it could mean maybe one year. It could mean maybe 10 years. It could mean 20. It could be 30. It could be 50. The Bible reminds us that uh, we have three scores and 10. And by the grace of God, we have more years added to it. So let me just do a little bit of math here. And if any math teacher in, in, in the building, I'm sorry if I, if, if, if I don't do it right. But three score in the Bible, one score is 20. Two score is 40. Three score is 60. And 10 is 70. And by strength and the grace of God, you can add a little bit more to it. And so we are guaranteed three score and ten. But sometimes we don't reach to that three score and ten. But the fact of the matter here is that we know that we are here temporarily. So at the age of 70, you thank God and you praise God that I've reached three score and ten. And then you say, Lord, I'm ready to go because my time here is over. But by, by strength, and the grace of God, you can keep on going. You see, my fellow believers, as our hope and light, Jesus Christ provide us with the peace, knowing that this earth is not our home. And we see life with a new lens and embrace Christ through whatever trials we encounter. Yes, I know there's a saying that everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And, 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 and Trust me, that's a fact. <laughs> Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Now, there are some people who believe that, yes, it's my time and it's all right. You know, uh, down in Madison, Wally Shanky passed on. And it was so beautiful and wonderful in the sense that I went to visit Wally on Saturday the week before he passed and Wally looked at me and he said Pastor John I am ready he said I am ready I'm ready to go and you know what I said I'm the pastor now he's telling me he's ready and you know what I told him I said, Wally, you ain't ready yet. We ain't ready for you to go. We need you here for a little bit, bit, a little bit more. You see, the point that I'm trying to make here is that some people are at peace and ready to go. But some of us don't want to 
uh, want them to go. We want to keep holding on. We want to keep holding on. And so as sojourners, as people who are in a place temporarily, we must understand that this body is just here for a little while. And because it is here for a little while, we do what we can do. We press on towards the hard calling. Yes, we are not perfect, but we continue to praise God and glorify God and share Jesus Christ's love. But knowing that we are here temporarily, it is so, it is so wonderful. And we begin to experience God's love. And so wherever we do, every morning, our prayers should be, God gave me the strength to share your word with someone. And when we move on from there, when we meet or encounter anybody, let that be the hope and light of Jesus Christ. Because we are not here forever. Yes, some people live to be 104. Some people live to be 110. Praise God for them. But when you understand and know that you are just yet, you are a sojourner, you're in this place temporarily, then you go and you do what the Lord said do. You see, because we are here temporarily, that does not mean that you walk in the middle of the, of the road and, and say, well, I'm here temporarily, so Lord, it's time for me to go. No. But what that means is that you make the best of life. You know, there's a, there, there's a story that, that I read uh, and someone else told me about it. And it talks about this man who was drowning in the water. And he was drowning. He had, to, he had a very strong faith. And he was in the water drowning. And a boat came by to get him out of the water. And he said, no. He said, you go ahead. Uh, the Lord will save me. So the boat left. The next came a helicopter. And the helicopter came over here and said, come on, let's get you out of the water. He said, no, you all go. God will save me. Because I got faith. And then a strong swimmer came by. Said, get on my back. Let me take you to show. He said, no, go ahead. God will save me. Eventually, he died. He got drowned and he died and he went to heaven. <clears throat> he said, God, why did you allow me to die? I trusted you. I had the best faith and I knew you would save me. God said, I'll send you a boat. And you turn it around. I send you a helicopter, and you turn it away. I send you a, a, a swimmer, and you turn it away. What else you want me to do? <laughs> I've done all I can do. The, 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 the moral of the story is that, yes, we are here temporarily. But that does not mean that we should take advantage of this temporary place where we live. We should do the best that we can to love others, so Jesus Christ light to others. And let God, let Jesus Christ light shine on us so that we can shine on others. <coughs> Finally, Jesus Christ is our hope and light because he gives us strength, courage, and boldness. Jesus Christ is our light. He gives us strength because Psalm 119, 105 tells us, gives us the strength to walk and not be weary. You see, Isaiah 40 and 31 tells us that we will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. You see, Jesus Christ is our hope because he gives us courage to face adverse, adversities and keep on pressing 
into his presence. When we are dealing with problems and situations, when we are dealing with issues, that's when we get the courage to be able to press into his presence, come to prayer meeting, or even on our own time, we can pray. You see, it's the psalmist reminds us to become strong and allow our heart to take courage because we must hope in God. We must be strong and let our heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord, my fellow believers, it is important for us to understand that Jesus Christ is our hope and light because we have that boldness to be able to speak truth to where, where in whatever situation we find ourselves or wherever we go. We must understand that Jesus Christ has given us that boldness because of his hope and light on us to be able to stand up and speak the word of God. My fellow believers, the Bible reminds us in Matthew 4 and 6, it says there that our light must shine before men that they can glorify our Father in heaven. You know, when I'm driving down this road at night, and as soon as I come down that hill, what do I see? I see the light from Ebenezer, a church that sits on the hill. My fellow believers, in closing, I want you to understand that Jesus Christ is our hope and light. And so we must continue to let our light shine before men that they may see his good work. We must continue to be that light on the top of the hill that everyone can see <coughs> because light can overcome darkness. And so as we go through this week, as we go through this uh, uh, month and, and, and this year, let us remember that Jesus Christ, our hope and light, is because of God's love, knowing that we are sojourner on this earth. And Christ gives us the strength, the courage, and boldness. And so I want to encourage each and every one of us to continue to trust and believe that Jesus Christ is there for us. And so, what I want to leave with you this morning is that we all take a resolution, a New Year's resolution. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to read my Bible more. But this is the resolution that I want to challenge each and every one of you with. And that resolution is to allow Jesus Christ to be your hope and light. Hope knowing that Jesus will always be there for you. And the light, having a resolution that wherever you go, whatever you do, whoever you come in contact with, let your light, let the light of Jesus Christ shine in that place <coughs> so that you can share God's love. As you go through this year, let that be your resolution. Hope and light. Amen, amen, and amen. As we, as you've heard the word of God this morning, I will go with, uh, are there any concerns for, that are out there this morning that we need to pray for? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. Lord, we magnify your name for all that you continue to do in our lives. We come now, Lord, standing before your throne of grace and mercy, interceding for our relatives, friends, and loved ones. Dear Heavenly Father, we present our dear sister Tanya to you, who is dealing with health issues. God, we pray that you look down upon her, Lord, touch her, and heal her body, dear God. We ask that you continue to be with her, dear God. Give her 
the strength to heaven the father to carry on we pray for all the medical staff that's going to support her and be around her we ask god that you continue to just watch over her pray for our brother all in heaven the father heaven the father you know what he's dealing with god you know his situation but lord we present him to you right now in the name of jesus god we ask that your healing power will, will be upon him lord and, and, and keep him in your perfect care dear heavenly father god we magnify your name and we lift you up on high lord we ask that you walk into his home dear god and you let your spirit just saturate that place heavenly father rest upon him O thou holy spirit heavenly father we pray your blessings upon him and give him the strength heavenly father we pray that you comfort his family around him Lord, give them the ability, Lord, to just uh, know that you are in control, Heavenly Father, and they have that peace knowing that all things work out together for good of those that love God. We pray for our dear brother Don, Heavenly Father. We pray for his healing, Lord, and his strength, Heavenly Father. God, we pray that you give him the ability to, to know what uh, 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 to know those around him, Heavenly Father. God, we know that sometimes it becomes difficult, Heavenly Father, for those who are around him, his children and his, and his spouse. But Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with each and every one of them, Lord. We pray that you be with, with, with Jenny, Heavenly Father, that you strengthen her, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you continue to do for him. We thank you for our dear Mother Gloria, who, Lord, has, has come through her procedure, Heavenly Father, and we pray that all did go well with her, dear God. We now ask that you continue to heal her body from the inside out, God. We ask your healing power upon her, Lord. We thank you for, for Doug, who's there to support her, Heavenly Father, and all other family members, God. We love you and we give you honor and glory and praise for her. Heavenly Father, we pray for our dear sister June, Heavenly Father, that God, you will heal her body, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to be with her, Lord. We just... Uh, Turn her over to you right now, dear God, and just pray that your will will be done in her life, dear God. We thank you for the support of all those who are around her, especially uh, her spouse, dear God, and the children, Heavenly Father. Uh, we just ask that you be with Merle, Heavenly Father. Continue to strengthen them as they labor in your vineyard. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Dan Katie's family, Heavenly Father. We ask your continuous blessings and comfort upon them, Heavenly Father, as they continue to mourn the loss of the 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 their father the husband and the and the son heavenly father god we ask your continuous blessings upon them also we pray for Letitia price heavenly father we ask uh, uh, that you you be with her be a god as she has lost her father also her father has passed on from glory from 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 labor to reward heavenly father so god we ask your blessings upon her give her the strength heavenly father to carry on we thank you for the lives of these two gentlemen heavenly father and we just glorify your name that you give them you give us the opportunity to be with the families for this little while even though they were so journeys but now God they have gone into your heavenly arms God we glorify your name and we thank you we pray for all the unspoken prayer requests Lord we ask that you listen to them and and please Heavenly Father let your be ear be attentive to the prayers of your servant we glorify your name for all that you do for us in our lives now as your son our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has taught us to pray we are bold to say the Lord's Prayer together our Father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Terry going to finish up. Remember, I told you I'm just a guest preacher. <laughs> I'll see you on this. We'll have the presentation of our tithes and offerings.
Closing him will be uh, stand, stand by me. <clears throat> Would you please receive the benediction? The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen.